Hey guys, I've been preaching over on Instagram about the safe way of going darker for fall. And for this service, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be adding some of her natural darkness, adding some more depth and dimension into her hair. But we're going to do it in a way so that when spring and summer comes back around, she'll be able to go blonde again without causing any damage. So keep watching to see how we created this beautiful dimensional blonde color. If you would like, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Christy at the Cottage. So my client's coming in and we're going to be adding some darker tones to her hair. She's pretty solidly blonder through the ends. So we're definitely going to be breaking that up and adding a lot more depth. Hey guys, for my client today, it's going to be actually pretty easy and fast. I think I don't think this video is going to be too long. Um, my client that's coming in, we're actually going to just add some dimension back into her hair. She normally does like really bright, like blonde right on her forehead and then just kind of along her hairline. And last time she was here, it was summertime and we did it more like blonde through the ends. But because we're going into fall, we're going to add a little bit more dimension through her hair. So I figured this would be a good video just to show like how to add that dimension back into your blondes that want to go darker for fall. But on my Instagram, I talk a lot about why I don't go dark for fall because when spring comes around, you're going to want to go blonde again and it's going to be really damaging on your hair. It's going to be hard to get rid of that stain of warmth that the dark color leaves. So I feel like this is a good, like, a good color to do for somebody that wants to go darker, but we'll still maintain the blonde a little bit. We'll just tone it down. So I figured this was a good video to show you because... If there's anything I hate, it's a blonde that goes really dark in the fall time. Also, I forgot to say, to mix my color, I'm going to be using my Schwarzkopf Blonde Me with 20 volume and Olaplex. If you guys watch my videos, then you know that this is like the only bleach that I ever use, the Schwarzkopf Blonde Me. It's literally my favorite. It has the best lift. Other bleaches I've used, I'm just not a fan or it doesn't lift as well. So that's always what I use to do my blonding services. And to start her hair, we're just gonna go right around her hairline. She always loves having a really bright, bold piece of color, money piece, right on her hairline. And she likes having it directly up to the root. So we're just going to come through and foil and do a little bit of a weave. And we're just going to do like two or three foils back to back all the way around her hairline. That way when she pulls her hair back, she'll have like a nice even brightness all the way around. And that's about it. We're not going to go through her hair. We're not going to add any more blonde anywhere else we just always go through and touch up just these little areas and then that will call it good for the blotting part of the service Now that we're on the sides of her hair by her temples, we're going to go through and do some vertical foils. Just do some really fine baby lights, not anything too heavy of a weave. We still want it to be kind of softer and blend really nicely with her hair, not be it too bright just in the temple area. So we're going to just add some really soft baby lights, just two foils again, and this will be all so now you can see after this part of the service that she'll have like an even brightness all the way around her hairline. Um, I feel like I need to talk about my purple finger. So the day before I did this color, I did this like 
huge color transformation. If you follow me on Instagram, then you've probably already seen me post it. It's this really pretty like purple but like copper like color that I did and I wore gloves so I don't want to see any like no gloves in the comment section. It's just that I don't I don't know what I was doing but clearly like I got purple on my finger. Um it's finally gone, but I did wear gloves. I actually have a video of the service coming. I just haven't done it yet cuz it's going to be a longer video, but I just wanted to address it so that y'all don't have to call me out in the comment section. Okay, so we just applied her foils just like right around her hairline. And now I'm going to go through and add like some darker dimensional pieces just to try to match her natural color. And I'd say she's probably like a level six naturally. Um, I'm trying to think of the color to use in her hair and I don't want to use Paul Mitchell the Demi because however much I really like the color, I feel like it's too sheer and it's just, it's too translucent, I feel like, so I don't think it would cover very good or give the coverage that I want for her hair. Um, I think it's amazing for blondes and if somebody just wants like a really soft shadow root, I would use it for that, but I don't want it for like actually de depositing color. Um, another thing that I'm thinking about for her color is doing Schwartz Coffee Igora Vibrance because I feel like it has um, a nice color that I deposit it gives it nice depth. Um, again, I'm, it's not like I carry the whole line. I do a lot of blondes, so I don't have a lot of tones for adding like depth to the hair, which maybe I should go to the beauty supply and like pick up more colors for that just in case for stuff like this. Um, so the colors that I have that I'm thinking I might use is the 5-1, which is like a 5-ash. And then I have like a 6-6-8, six, six, which is like a chocolate red. However, I don't really want red, but I did tell her we do need to add some warmth in our hair because um, of the blonde just to help it hold more. And then I was thinking that I could cool it back down with like a 6-1-2. Okay, I'm kind of questioning my formulation that I want to use. So I have like a natural, just level nine, which is ideal. If you guys have a natural, just use natural. I don't though. You guys, I literally deliberated back there for like 20 minutes trying to figure out what I was going to mix. So I ended up with five, one and nine. So the level nine is the natural that I need. Um, I didn't have a natural in any other of my levels, so nine was the only option that I had. So I added a little bit more of the five ash and then I, because I want to make sure that her hair is a little bit cooler, I don't want it to be super warm. So that's why I use the five ash and then to lighten it up just a smidge, I use the lot the natural level nine so that way um, like if I had like honestly you guys if I had like a seven or six ash with a six N I would have just mixed that together but I, but I don't have that so I just ended up using the five ash with the just a little bit of the natural nine and just to like bump it up a little bit so it's not as dark so that's what I ended up mixing. That was really confusing. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I'm a crackhead. I need to stock up on some darker tones for fall. Clearly, sorry, I'll do better next time. Thank you for watching. Okay, now that I'm done being stupid, and sorry that you missed like the first little section. So what I am doing is basically doing a zigzag foil and then I'm kind of weaving it and that's the piece that I'm doing that I'm adding the depth to. So her hair is really, really fine and it's not super thick. It's not thick at all actually. Um, so I don't have to add a whole bunch of darker pieces or darker foils back into her hair to add that dimension. So, um, use your discretion when you have your clients if you feel like you need to do like heavier amounts and more sections and 
um, less hair in between than what I'm doing to add depth back to your client's hair, then do what you feel like you need to do. Honestly, when I was doing her hair, I'm like, I don't think I'm adding enough. But then in the end, it turned out perfect. So I'm actually glad that this is the right amount of depth that I added back into her hair. So just so you know, for her whole service, I'm just going to be doing like a zigzag weave and I'm going to be painting all the way through her ends and I'm like swishing it all the way up into her root so that way it blends with her natural color. As we're watching me just add this dimension back into our hair, I already told you like the process. I'm just going to be doing the zigzag weaves. I'm just taking some panels throughout her hair, leaving a subsection in between and adding that dimension in there. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing for the whole service. So let's get into why you don't go dark for fall. Okay. If you're blonde, if you have blonde clients, please do not go darker for fall. Like my client that I'm doing right now, she naturally is per, uh, like a level six or so. She keeps her hair blonde and then she kind of adds a little bit of brightness through the summertime. So I feel like this is okay to go as dark as we did just because this is kind of her natural tone and what she usually does anyways. The amount of blonde that we did is not how she normally has her hair. So the thing is with my clients and I totally went off on Instagram and my stories and I've written a few posts about it, is if you have blonde hair and now you want to go darker for fall, well, that color is going to stay in your hair. So say that you're really, really blonde, you add this darker color. When you want to go back to blonde again, when summer or spring comes back around, you're going to have to lift through that hair. And what's going to happen is you're going to be left with a band of like yellow or orange because that artificial pigment that we have to live through, it really stains the hair. So it pr makes it practically impossible to break through it completely. So say you're somebody that has like, like a very heavy foil or your platinum blonde and you just want to tone down for fall adding a lot of darkness back into your hair is not the thing that i would ever recommend for my clients just because when the time comes for you to go blonde again like you're gonna be stuck trying to break through that color and you're potentially gonna damage your hair a lot because now you have to use a lot of bleach break through that color it could take a few sessions so i highly recommend just maybe toning down the hair like a shade or two and maybe instead of like if you have highlights like maybe just doing a very very fine weave in the hair and not doing it as heavy that way you still create like a little bit of dimension and more of a rooty look and keeping that darkness with your natural that you have and then doing more of a color melt and like kind of doing a darker shadow root and then blending it down to like the brighter ends. That way you're keeping that darkness and toning down for fall if you're wanting to have a little bit more of a toned down look versus having it so bright. But the thing is, when summer comes around, your hair is not going to have that damage to go through. Your ends are still a little bit brighter. So you're not going to like have to melt your ends off or cut your hair or anything because you've already kept them nice and bright you're just adding that dimension that kind of like more through the roots or not brightening it up as much as you normally would so if you guys want to you can check out my instagram christy at the cottage and i have a lot of my clients on there right now that are kind of doing this transitional like not so bright blonde but we're adding a little bit of depth back into there and I always leave it in my description um, what I do with my surfaces or the way I go about adding darkness back into the hair. I just really wish people would understand that you make our jobs really hard if you color your hair back to dark. And especially if it's permanent, I mean, there's no way, like I tell my clients, if you go dark, do not come back to me and ask me for blonde because it's not going to happen. I'm not going to put my name on the line and risk having your hair like break off or whatever because you have so much damage. So if you go darker, like just know that you're probably going to stay there for a while. 
And the way that you should do it safely, if you do want to add a little bit, bit of dimension, is don't throw a permanent color on your hair. What we're doing right now is just doing like a semi-permanent color. So it's softly going to fade out anyways and kind of lighten up. So her hair is going to brighten up a little bit, but it will still retain some of that depth that we're putting in. So that will be nice because by the time that you know two months go by she's gonna feel a little bit brighter again and not as dark so adding a little bit of like a semi or demi permanent color will be nicer to add that dimension because it's not gonna sit there forever in the hair it's not gonna be damaging it will kind of pull out a little bit easier when you do want to go blonde again or perhaps it might even have faded out all the way so just keep in mind that you don't want to go through the cycle of blonde, dark, blonde, dark, because that's when you run into damage and having breakage and having yellow hair. Like if you want to have like a warmer tone of blonde, then you might be able to consider adding a little bit more darkness to your hair than if you, if you have like platinum blonde hair or if you like really ashy or cool tone blonde color because that warmth is going to be impossible to pull out all the way so if you like having really cool icy blonde hair i definitely don't recommend adding any darkness back into your hair because you're going to be left with like that warmth stuck in your hair so just keep all that stuff in mind educate your clients if they want to go darker just give them options don't go through and do like a full foil maybe do like add a few little spots where you can add some dimension or maybe like do a little bit more of a shadow root to keep the depth in there but you know at least they feel a little bit darker but still kind of brighter through the ends um anyways that's my two cents on it you can follow me on instagram if you have any questions you can check out my post and ask me ask me there so this is all that i did for her hair just added these panels um you can see that i brought it up to her root so that way it will blend and i let this sit for about 20 minutes so here's her hair before, um, not too bright, but you know, she has a lot of blonde going through the ends. And then here's her after I wanted to show you guys before I style it because a lot of people are like, oh, it always looks good it's curled, but how does it look when it's straighter? So that that's how it looks when it's straight. And then here it is curly now. I like it. This color blended so perfectly with her natural hair. Like I literally couldn't see where her natural was and where the color was that we added back in there but i loved how this turned out it was so pretty um i hope you guys got some information from this thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions please leave it in the comment section below and thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe okay so i just finished my client and i'm in my car now sometimes i feel like a dumbass like talking on the camera if there's like people around um so the color that we did just turned out really, really good. Like, I am not kidding you. Like it was a perfect match to her hair. Like you couldn't even really see like where her natural hair was versus where the color was that we put in her hair. Um, the formulation that I ended up going with was the 5N, oh no, 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 no. I ended up going with the 5N and the 9 zero. So, I guess if you had to formulate or like find a color, you maybe would want to go with like a level seven, like neutral or something, maybe a little bit cooler though. Cause her hair was a little bit ashier. Um, but she was really, really happy with her hair. I was really happy with how it turned out and how it just blended perfectly. Um, and then to tone her blonde, all I used was the Fanola no yellow shampoo that really like brightened it up for her. And the whole service cost, I didn't trim her hair or anything, was $175. I know sometimes you guys like it when I tell you, like, um, how much the service was. But I feel like it just really varies depending on where you're from and where I'm from. I'm in just, like, a really small, like, farm community. So, I don't know. Maybe you would charge more depending on where you're at. So, Anyways, I was really happy with her hair. Really glad that I went with that formulation. I, I really need to invest in more like darker tones because I do so much blonde, but now that like people are going a little bit darker, I really do need to get something else to like 
add some more depth and dimension back into the hair. But um, anyways, my phone's ringing, but I just wanted to um, not call you guys. I just wanted to talk to you guys and tell you about the what I thought about afterwards and how great the color blended. So thanks you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.